Hey guys, it's Kristen and welcome back to The Gold Project. In today's video, I will be sharing with you my emergency binder. If you missed any of the previous Binders 101 videos, make sure you check one of the links below. I have covered an introduction video, my home binder, my medical binder, taxes binder, recipes binder, and then lastly, I covered my personal binder. The emergency binder is probably the most important one that I think I have in my entire household, and that is why it goes last. It's the one that takes the longest to put together, and it has bits and pieces of several of the other binders that I have already shown you. For my emergency binder, I have decided to go with the 3-inch Better Binder from Staples in the red color. Now, this is the biggest binder of the entire series that I have done. And that is because this binder has the most information in it. So I wanted to choose the biggest binder that I could, but one that wasn't extremely too big to tote around. When I did the original Binders 101 series on my blog, I broke this binder up into five different blog posts. But for this one, I decided to just run through everything in one video. So if this video is a tad bit lengthy, I apologize. But this binder contains a lot of information. I have a lot of printables that I will share links with you below so that you can download them and use them for your own household. Before we get into the contents of this binder, I just want to explain why I put together an emergency binder. This emergency binder was put together in case we have some kind of emergency situation happen that affects us or our household. Let's say we have a tornado that hits. Yes, I live in an area where we have many tornado warnings and watches during certain seasons like fall and spring. My hometown was hit by a large tornado back in 2006 that destroyed my high school, my alma mater, and had to have an entire new high school built. And a lot of the town was destroyed and had to be rebuilt. So when we talk about emergencies, I have seen those type of things happen. Also, besides tornadoes, let's say a fire hits, or you have some kind of ice storm. I've been through two of those. So any type of situation to where I think we might need to evacuate and we might not have a lot of time, this binder contains everything we should need to just grab and run out of the household. Now, since this binder has so much personal information in it, from checking account information, credit card information, social security numbers, phone numbers. This binder is not left sitting out in my home. I have this binder placed in a spot to where my husband and I know where to find it if a situation occurs. But you're not going to be able to just walk into my house and see this red binder sitting somewhere. It is hidden, so in case somebody breaks in our house, they won't be able to steal all of our information. And for the cover of my emergency binder, I created this document using Microsoft Word. If you would like to use this for your emergency binder, just check out the link below. Now let's get into the contents of this binder. Now the first thing that you are going to see when you open up this binder is this little school supply pocket and inside the school supply pocket is my checkbook. I have a set of checks that I've placed in here in case we need them in an emergency situation. So I have all of the personal information covered up but just know that I keep a set of checks in this little sleeve in case we need them. Now we come to my index, and in case you're wondering, this is another one of the Avery indexes. I'll make sure to put links below to all the products that I mentioned. Now, this binder is broken up into five different sections. I have vital documents, financial documents, insurance documents, household inventory, and personal documents. 
I'm going to take you through each one of these tabs. And on a lot of them, I think on most of them, I have just the little outlines on the very beginning of each section because I can't show you my personal information. So let's start with the vital documents. Okay, in my vital document section, I have birth certificates for all of the members of my family, our marriage certificates or license. Well, when I say marriage certificates, I am talking about my license. And then I also have in here, if I can show it to you. Yes. I also have in here just the little, um, I guess you would say outline that the preacher used when we got married in 2007. So I also have that in here. So that and my marriage license. Um, driver's license for me and my husband, social security cards, vehicle registrations. I put passports on here. Neither one of us have one, but I went ahead and listed it in case you're going through each one of these and putting together your emergency binder. I would put passports in this section. And then school records. When I say school records, I'm thinking college. Uh, our transcripts from college any type of test scores, our praxis scores, our contracts, our um, teaching certificates for Missouri and Arkansas. All of those documents are contained within the vital documents section. Now, moving on to section two, which is financial documents. And yes, this is a lot of financial information. You might not have a lot of this information, but I have listed everything that I would put inside of this section, whether I have them or not. So, and you see my little to-do list over here so that I know what printables to share with you guys. We are gonna start with my passwords printable. A lot of things these days can be done online. I pay a lot of bills online. I have a lot of uh, account information online. I can log in using my username and password and find out how much I owe, what's my APR on different things. So what I did was I went in and I created an, and this is in black and white, so I apologize for that, but it's in color if you download it on the link below. So I've created this account passwords sheet here. So I have listed all of the accounts that I have, and it doesn't matter if it's Instagram, if it's Facebook, if it's Gmail, or if it's a credit card or my mortgage company. If it has an account and it has a username and a password and a website URL, it got listed on this sheet right here. So. This is very important, I feel like, especially if, let's say, something happens to me and my husband needs to know how to get into all of these accounts because he might not have that information with him. He can just pull this out from the emergency binder and know exactly what website to go to and how to log on. And I listed a contact number over here on the right just in case something were to happen and somebody needed to know how to get into one of these accounts. The next thing that you can find in here is the extra checkbook and cash. And you have already seen that. I put that in the very front of this binder. It should go in here, but I just felt it was better in the front since it was in a zippered pocket than stuck in the middle here and what it wouldn't allow my binder to lay flat, if that makes sense. It'd be have a big bulge in the center here. So that's why I placed the checking account information in the very beginning. After my extra checkbook and cash, I have paycheck stubs. So you might be wondering why in the heck would you put paycheck stubs inside of emergency binder? One, it shows you how much you make each paycheck. We get paid twice a month. Second, it shows if any insurance and dental and retirement and life insurance may get taken out of your check. Think if, you know, my sister has to come in here if something were to happen to me and my husband. Lord, I hope not. But if that does happen, she can look at my paycheck stub here and see what gets taken out of my check. How much do I usually get paid? Next, I have checking account information and savings account information. And this is all contained within another printable. And this, once again, I have printed this in black and white, but you can print it in color. It is on the um, 
PDF below. It is in color and it looks a lot cuter than this does, but I just printed it out this way to show you. The one I have in this document is actually color, or in this binder is actually in color. Now, this has all of our checking and savings account information on it. So the top is our checking account. So our banking institutions, routing numbers, account numbers, who to contact if you can't find out something, what our CVC code is on our debit cards, our ATM PIN numbers, all of that. Then at the bottom, we have our savings account information. I just think it's nice to have this in case something were to happen. You know where to call, who to contact in case you don't have internet or in case, you know, you don't have your cell phone. You have this and you know how to find out where all of your money is. The next thing that you will find in this section is our student loan records. I have a student loan. My husband has a student loan. So I have our detailed paperwork in here that has contact numbers, the website, and also our account numbers. Next is credit card information. I have another printable for that one. And this is the printable that I have here. Once again, I printed it out in black and white just to show you, but if you download the PDF below, it is in color and it looks a lot better. So this has six different spots for credit cards. And on each little section, you are gonna see a spot. Okay, focus, focus, there we go. A spot for the company and type. Let's say I have a Disney Visa, so that would be Disney Visa. So the name on the card, your credit card number, CVC code, expiration date, account number, the website, username and password if you pay those things online, and a contact number for that credit card in case you need to call and find out any detailed information. So, there are six spots on this card for you to put down all of your credit card information. Now, after that, we have retirement information. Now, I have taught in Missouri, so as my husband, and we have both taught in Arkansas. So, we get quarterly reports that have how much retirement we've put in for each state. So, I have both Arkansas and Missouri quarterly reports for my husband and myself in this section. Then I have our automobile titles, our home deeds. So basically any type of um, mortgage paperwork just to show that we own the house. Um, investment account information. This is something that we do not have. We do not have stocks and bonds, but I left it on this sheet in case you might have stocks and bonds. This would be a great place to put some of that information. Um, copy of tax returns and a copy of your credit report if you have a copy. I do not, but if you have a copy of your credit report, add it to this section. Now we are to the third section. The third section is all about insurance documents. So I have our a homeowner's insurance policy, our home warranty policy, our medical insurance policies and cards, our auto insurance policies, life insurance policies, air evac information, and our pest control and home maintenance contracts. Now, you might be wondering, do you have the original paperwork for each one of these things? No, I do not. For example, our homeowner's insurance and our home warranty policy, all of that is contained within the home binder. So I just took um, those documents and I made copies and I stuck them in this section of this binder. For the medical insurance policies and cards, I just took our cards and I made copies of our insurance cards and I placed them in here. Also, I put copies of our dental cards as well. Um, life insurance, Airy Vac, and for the Airy Vac, I had to call them and they gave me a home number. So if you don't have any Airy Vac information, just call them and they'll give you a home number, how you are, um, I guess, in their system. And I just kind of jotted that down on a printed sheet that I got from their website. Now we are to section four. Section four is for our home inventory. And this is the thing, the one thing out of this whole entire binder that I still need to do. What I plan on doing is taking my camera and just kind of walking through my house and recording a video or two of all of my rooms, all of my cabinets, um, drawers, closets, and then placing that memory card inside of this section. 
because if you have some kind of natural disaster happen, you're, you're probably not going to remember what's on each shelf in your living room or what dishes you have in every cabinet in your kitchen. So this is going to be a good way for me to remember, oh yeah, that was sitting on this bookshelf. Because if something like that happens, my brain is not going to be functioning to the best of its ability. So having that card in here will help me tremendously. Now we are to the fifth and final section. And I have labeled this one a personal documents. And inside of this section, you will find the emergency numbers printable. And I have several printables that I am going to be sharing with you for this section. Then I have a personal information printable. Every member of the family will get one of these. Then the combinations to our safe. We have a, when I say safe, we don't really have a safe. We have a little, um, oh, they call it, I guess, would you call it like a little fire safe? Like we have, yes, I think that's what it's called. We have the little box, little fire safe that we have sitting in our house that in case something, our house burns down, that won't burn up. So it's got some picture books and some important information in it. So I need to make sure I have those combinations in this section. Firearm licenses and serial numbers. Now we do not own any firearms in my house, but if you do, this would be a good section to put that in. Then employment contracts. And then last but not least, our evacuation information. I have came up with an evacuation plan for my household. And I'm not going to share that with you. But I am going to show you the principle that you can download below to create your own evacuation information plan. Okay, we are going to start with the emergency numbers principle. And I'm going to go through all of these and show you what they look like so you can download them and use them for your household. Okay, this is what our family emergency information looks like. I have created a section for the doctor, urgent care, hospital ER, dentist, pharmacy, poison control, fire department, and then I have a section for three relatives. Now I have two different little information sheets on one page, but you might need the whole entire sheet. Like for us, my husband and I have a dentist and then our kids have a dentist. So some of the information at the bottom was filled out as well. So I just think this is great in case you need to call the ER and you don't have that a phone book. You can just pull your emergency binder out and you know what the ER's address and phone number might be. Next, we're going to look at our personal information printable. And let me pop this out so you can look at it. Okay, the personal information principle looks like this. Basically, this just has a description of each person in our household. So it's got my name, address, my home phone, cell phone, email address, where I work, or school. For instance, let's say something happens and my kids are not here and it's school time or daycare time. This binder will have where somebody can locate them and see if they are safe at their school or daycare. Then it's got birthday, social security number, blood type, eye color, hair color, height, weight, allergies, medical conditions, medications, glasses, contacts. Then down here it has doctor, dentist, and pharmacist, which I had on the previous principle. So I just put on other form down here, but you can fill it out. And then I have a spot for a picture here. So I just thought this was good to have to make sure that let's say that somebody comes in your home and they are looking for you, trying to figure out if they're, everybody that's in this household is safe. If everybody has one of these, they know who to look for and the name of that person. The last thing that I have contained within this binder in this fifth section is my evacuation information. Now, if you check the link below, I've got a link to this PDF. It says, Our Family's Emergency Evacuation Plan. So, I have this document saved for, my, for myself, but it is all filled out. 
So I'm going to go through every section with you. So the very top of the first page is meeting locations. So if we were inside of our house, for instance, a tornado, where would we meet? Outside of our home, let's say we have a fire. Where are we going to meet so that we know that everybody is safe and that we don't need to go back in the house and try to find somebody? Next, we have outside our neighborhood if asked to evacuate. Our out-of-area contact person. This person is a um, person outside of your hometown that can attempt to make phone calls for you. So I have name, relationship, and phone number. Now, then I have a section down here for evacuation routes. For immediate shelter, the closest evacuation hotel, a relative that is near, maybe not in the same town, but in the same area, and then a relative that is out of town. Page two, we can't forget about our furry family members. So I have a section at the top that has vet and local animal shelter information. In case, let's say that you get separated from your animals, you could call to see if maybe they were turned into one of these two locations. Then last but not least at the bottom, I have home floor plan. Let's, it's good to have this in case, let's say there's a fire and you know that a family member is trapped in one of the rooms. You can show a fireman your markup of your house and he'll know exactly what room they are located in. So I have it, um, I have copied and pasted a picture that I drew in Excel on here, but if you can freehand it, go right ahead. And then I just have a little description at the bottom that you can go to the Red Cross. It says, if your community has experienced a disaster, register on the American Red Cross Safe and Well website to let your family know you are safe. And it has that information. And that is all for my emergency binder and for my Binders 101 series. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I have inside of my emergency binder. And I hope you've enjoyed all of the videos in this series. If you like the home organization videos, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would do so. I hope you all have a fantastic week. And until next time, bye. Bye.